Have you ever seen anything as exciting as that? Yes, full solar powered, hydroponics, bits and pieces, homemade, really dodgy. Well, these are brought and then modified. Let's get started and show you what fun we've been having. <laughs> And welcome back to another video that is me growing stuff in pots. This is stuff, 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 stuff. Well, welcome back to the cage. It is a sunny Monday. Yes, we are going to do some solar hydroponics. If you don't know what hydroponics is, it is nutrients in some water pumping up through little pots, trickling down a drain and then back into the nutrients again. So instead of using a pump, we're going to, well, we're going to use a pump. We're going to use a solar pump. So this is all off grid. If you haven't seen any of my old videos before, this crappy thing here, I know, is already hooked up to this drum. So the way that this is going to work is these three buckets here. What is going to pump up? Go through here. Go through these little tiny, what are they? I was going to call them a cup. They're not a cup. They are a pot with holes in the bottom. Water's gonna trickle down there, through this pipe here, and then down into there. All going well. I'm not too sure if I need a bigger drum, because that is, I don't even know how big that is. Maybe 20 liters? I'm guessing 20 liters, looking at it, maybe 30 liters. So yeah, hopefully that is enough water. We're gonna lose some with evaporation. Hopefully we won't lose too much water with leaks and stuff like that. So these Beto buckets have been spray painted black. If you saw my last video, these are the yellow ones with the white tops. Yes, and this is I think like five videos ago. It's pretty crappy. This was pretty much the same price as that system plus another one of those and the pump and that. We're not gonna use the pump. So what we're gonna do is get a, so we're gonna get a solar powered pump, which is over there, open it up and check it out. So the pump I'm using is a PondMax PS600. I think they're like 630 liters an hour, full solar, retail for about $200 in Australia. Yes, I do sell them. If you're in Brisbane, I can sort you out with one. You get pieces of paper and guarantees. You get a little thing to hook up the solar panel with. Yes, I had to figure out the word panel then. And you get your pump. And all it is, is a pump with cord going into a panel. That is like a fountain kit if you want to use it. That's an empty box, another empty box. Oh, so many empty boxes. But underneath the false bottom, if I can open it, is our solar panel. There he is. Let me get that out of there. All on the floor where it belongs. There is our solar panel. Super, super simple. There is the cord there. That solar panel plugs into the pump and the pump pumps water. Obviously it only works when there is sun. So this system, and I'm not convinced it's the best way of going. So we're gonna do a bit of experimenting with this system. Is it's on in the daytime, off at night. I think it works better 24 hours a day going by my lettuce aquaponics systems I have around the back, but the fun of gardening is experimenting and seeing what works and what doesn't. And talking about what works, look, we have our first potatoes popping up. <laughs> yeah, and there are some beans just starting to sprout. There's one there. So potatoes, beans, those things. I will go through all these pots because things have started growing in the last week, but check out that. There are way, way too many radish. Those are baby radish. I know, I need to split them up. I'm not entirely sure if I should split them up now or wait for them to get a little bit bigger before I split them up. Because yeah, if you split them up too soon, they die. And that's not a good thing. Otherwise, I'm not entirely sure what all these things are. I do have tags, but the tags are not on the pots. <laughs> I think those are rhubarb. I'm not sure. I think I got rhubarb. They've got red on them, so possibly rhubarb. Who knows? Anyway, back to this. So we're going to rig up our giant mess pump there. We're going to put our solar panel up here on the cage. I'm going to plug it in and see what happens. Well, it seems to be working. 
There's a few leaks, but you know, what's that? Doesn't really matter. Ah, that bucket needs to be pushed down a little bit. We'll deal with that. Now, my solar panel is up there. I haven't really fixed that up there, so in the first gust of wind, it's gonna go flying. But we'll deal with that when that happens. Seems to be a decent amount of flow. These are little droppers. So I'm probably gonna move them over in the middle a little bit. This system is a bit dodgy. It is working. There's water trickling down through the bits. But what I did sort of realize with this is the water comes up here and goes through all three. But depending on how stable this is, and it's not stable, obviously, the water goes through one side and not the other two. So I've sort of got it, so there's a little bit of water trickling down each of them. Not much in that one, unless I push the whole thing back. So I don't know how that's gonna go. I guess we'll find out in the next month or so, won't we? But that is our dodgy little solar system so far. It's very loud. Listen to that. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I have some random, what are they? Of course, they're tomato plants. I don't know what type of tomatoes they are. I don't even know if it says what they are. It probably says what they are there, but I'm not even gonna read it. They're tomato plants. We are going to stick some tomato plants in here. That's gonna be our test subject and see how we go. So we're going to pop those in some medium and stick them in there now. Well, that was exciting stuff, wasn't it? So I've managed to push this around a little bit. So there's water going down these two. I have my tomato plants perched in there. All going well, it should be fine. We have tomato plants in these. And as the sun decides to wake up, because we have a super, super overclassed day, we have more water dripping through. So I think I just need to adjust these so there's a little bit less water going through maybe. So I've got sponges there, which the tomato plants are in the sponges, which are, the tomato plants are in the sponge with just the, whatever that crap is, starts with L, some stuff, media, grow media around it, which is not really doing anything. Yes, but that is where we are. I've adjusted that one down. I think I've got rid of all the drips, or the leaks, and some dodgy zip ties, <laughs> all going well. Now what I'm gonna do now that I know that works is I'm going to adjust the pH of that. Apparently six to 6.5 for tomatoes. That's what I've read, could be totally wrong, have no idea. I'm gonna adjust the pH of that and then we're gonna use the wrong stuff. Yes, I'm gonna use a mixture of this and that, which is just trace elements, minerals, and so on and so on. They always come in two parts because if you mix them together, it apparently binds to different trace elements and stuff. Oh, dropped that one and it doesn't work. So we're gonna do all that, let that run for a little bit. And while we're doing that, yeah, that worked. Half sort of sitting up like that. While all that's getting sorted, this garden bed, yes, that is a full-size black skeleton. Yes. <laughs> no, it is not real. Well, it's real plastic. I'm gonna use that for the beans that I've planted in here to climb up. Obviously, I'll need more things for the zucchini and the oh, cucumbers, which comes to mind that I have a lot more cucumbers growing over there, which I have to deal with soon. But I'm thinking maybe up here, I might I'd have another skeleton because you know, you do. I might just run this one along here and then I can run cords down and then these beans and those can grow up. So maybe a skeleton from there to there. We might come back with a skeleton up there. Yes, let's do that. Yeah, that'll definitely work. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> so when my zucchinis and the cucumbers grow up, We'll just let them wrap around the skeletons. Well, bean skeleton, zucchini skeleton. Yeah, I'll probably just do some more things. More things, yeah, that's what I'll do. I might also, yeah, I think I attach some beams across here and then I can run some strings down so they'll go up and along 
everyone's happy apart from the people that come round and wonder what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> but you know, that's fine. That one's a little bit niggly, isn't it? Yeah, okay. It is plastic. It is. Surely it is. And don't call me Shirley. So, I've also got four, what are these, strawberry plants there. I did grab that out of the trash. It is tomato sugar sack. Sack. Tomato sugar snack. <laughs> that ain't a sugar sack. That's what these tomatoes are. Yeah, so I can come back to this video and go, what on earth were they? Or they were the best ever tomatoes. Or they did not even survive, never buy them again. They are tomato sugar snack, not sack. I have buffered my pH, so apparently a little bit lower than I thought. So you need about 5.5 to six or something like that. So we're hovering just below six with that. Um, yeah, and I've added my solutions to that. I can't find my TDS pen, and that's just total dissolved solids, which just means how much nutrients I've got in the water. Doesn't overly matter, I don't think. Well, you need to change the solution every two weeks. So, if I've stuffed it up, if it hasn't killed all these tomatoes, then I'll just do it properly next time. I might use reverse osmosis water as well, so that has a low TDS to start with, because the TDS out of the tap is in the mid 200s and ideally you want it at zero. That's just all the other minerals and bits and pieces and then that tells you how much of your solutions to pit in your hydroponics. All going well, they're not gonna die. I'm sure there'll be an update, update. I can't even talk, can I? I'm sure there'll be an update in the next week or two to show you what's happening. Freshly planted, hopefully they won't all die. Now, I have no idea what all these are. So we're gonna go through these and figure it out. That's the only one I know what it is, and those are the radish. Yeah, I'm thinking those are carrots. I'm gonna grab my list and be back. Okay, this is gonna be near impossible. So we've got carrot, Nantes Darcy, Corliss. Ugh, what a stupid name. I don't know, what are carrots? Are those carrots? Or are those carrots? Not entirely sure. I know those are the cucumbers. I thought they were zucchinis, but they're actually cucumbers. So we know those are, get ready for it, long green supermarket cucumber. Yeah, that's an awesome name. So apparently I have Roma tomatoes. Oh, maybe those are tomatoes. I should know, I've grown, oh no, those are tomatoes. Okay, yes, they look like tomatoes. So we have Roma tomatoes, and we have Long Green Supermarket Cucumbers. What a stupid name. I'm never gonna get over that name, by the way. Okay, that's those. So maybe those are carrots. Anyone in the comments know if they look like baby carrots or not? I mean, eventually I'm gonna find out, but no idea. Um, they might be lettuce. Do you think those are lettuce? It's supposed to be bloody lettuce. Well, actually not bloody lettuce. Um, okay, they look like carrots as well, don't they? And I'm pretty sure I had two different types of carrots. Oh, why have I only got carrots once? Cabbage, leek, beetroot, spring onions, celery. That is exciting. Okay. Oh, it is. Look, right at the top. Carrot all year round. Mm-hmm, and carrot. Okay, they look like them, so I'm pretty sure those are carrots. Which are which? Not entirely sure. So we'll say those are the carrots, those are the tomatoes, those are the whatevers, cucumbers. Those are the French breakfast radish. Okay, so what a lettuce. Is that a lettuce? Does anyone know if that is a lettuce, a broccoli, or a cabbage, or a bok choy? Oh. Okay, I'm gonna have to let these get a little bit bigger to figure out what on earth they are, I think. And then there's those. They could be spring onions. Okay, spring onions or leek. Spring onions or leek. And then, what are those down the back? Is this something that was lavender, who knows? Oh, beetroot. They've gotta be beetroot because they've got red bits on them. 
If you know what any of these are, just timestamp down below and tell me, or just randomly tell me silly things. It doesn't really matter, does it? Because eventually we're going to find out. Bok choy. I reckon that is bok choy. Just going by me not knowing anything. <laughs> so cabbage and broccoli. Maybe, I don't know. That looks kind of the same as that, which looks kind of the same as that. And then I've got these two down here. That one has not grown at all. I have no idea what that is. And that one is just, we're just peeing then. The sun's just gone off. That one has just started germinating. Don't know what that is either. I think that might be the lavender. Well, that is where we are. We're going to, you know, do another video in a week or so. See what's happened. Will all those be dead? Will they be good? It's just starting to heat up because it is just, I think three weeks away from spring and then everything will take off and go crazy. Yeah. If you did like this wonderful video, click the thumbs up so I know. Feel free to comment down below because apparently the algorithm loves that stuff. And yeah, I'll get back to you. And yeah, how much fun. Have you done any weird systems like this? Have you also got the water going on a timer 24 hours a day or just during the day? Or have you got them going continuously without a timer? Comment down below, that would be wonderful information. We're just mucking around and having fun in our cage. Anyway, we will see you in the next video. Click the little videos on the screen if you wanna see more and we will see you in the next one.